Let me pray and we'll get started with today's class. Uh, Abino Makino, we are here once again, Father, and we are gathered in your name. And we, we just love you, Father. We just ask that you would join us today, that you would calm us in our spirits, that you would comfort us, that you would lead us to your wisdom. Um, and lead this class today, Father, in the way that you would have us to go. And keep us protected in the name of your son, Yeshua, from the enemy. And we ask this in his name. Amen. All right. Thank you guys for pulling up the slack last week, Chris and, and Harry and uh, all the other guys. Um, I don't know what to say, man. Uh, it would be a really reassuring to know uh, you got a, a group that when one man pull, it falls down, then you pull together. And um, I'm thankful for you. Um, for that, so thank you. You you are meaning like uh, leading the this discussions? Yeah, as we well leading the class last week. I wasn't able to, to make it. I was not physically able. Um, I I'm, I, a bit I, I, I'm still bleeding, and it's uh it's a you know a few ounces every day. I'm noticing as I'm sitting here right now, I'm feeling very weak and lightheaded. So, um. I got to get that uh, addressed. And, uh, you know, the fact that I've had friends pass away that are younger than me is, is wearing on my uh, psychological, you know, it's, it's paralyzing. <laughs> anyway. I'm just, I'm just glad you're back because it, it, my name is Haraldur. And in Icelandic, it means general or a leader. And it is kind of like, I'm 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 really like I get I, I'm, I'm I'm I hope you have seen it I'm rather radical and and um, I was a bit worried because I I didn't want to overwhelm people. No, no, you you did you did fine. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to be probably doing some. reconfiguring the, the web page and things. So there's going to be some changes. Um, you know, the YouTube, it, the, they just make it so hard for a YouTuber to make it on that. Um, that quite literally Darla and I are doing a lot of things pro bono and um, it, it kind of catches up to you when you have expenses like this month to get these cows here just killed us. So it's frustrating that I have so many subscribers, but, it's like, you know, Code Searcher is here for in entertainment purposes or something. You know, it, it, when, we, when we're teaching the name or we're teaching something very profound and, uh, you know, I, I get word from my brother that now you see TV threw me under the bus with some broadcast they did um, with uh, uh, Nostradamus. I think the title was Nostradamus and, and coming out of witchcraft or something like that. And somebody asked a question about Bible codes to John Pounders. Um, and you're just like, I was disappointed in his answer. Um, hey, hey, brother, can I ask a question? How long yeah. ago was that? I don't know how long ago it was. was I didn't after see it. Your appearance? Was that after your, your last appearance? I'm not sure. This, all right, so my brother James, uh, who's going to write the program for us, a new code program, watches a lot, a lot of now you see TV and he messaged me and um, he said, Hey man, um, I don't know if you saw this or not, but uh, I don't think that this was right. They threw you under the bus. You know, his answer was not any, he, he, he knew how I would respond. So I said, no, I hadn't seen this. I don't know if you know what you're talking about, but um, apparently it's, it's I could go and look for the video, but it's, it's, I think it was about Nostradamus and coming out of uh, witchcraft or something like that. And, and, and during the, the question part of the broadcast, somebody asked John Pounders if Bible codes were witchcraft or something like that. And his answer was yes, um, which I emphatically deny is going on here. That is not the case. Now it can be used for evil, right? We don't, we don't pursue evil or consider that right we very humble and kadosh is this uh this gift that you was given us it's like the e5 
strange fire does not mix with this. If you've got ill intention, if you've got a bad motive, guys, you will see in your life spiritually and even physically manifest around you all kinds of things um, you'll encounter if you start using this for bad game. Let me just say that. Man. You, hey, Jonathan. Yes. Um, I, I saw John Pounder say something or I heard him, but at the, if it was the same episode in the same breath, he basically said, I don't know a lot about it. Okay. Like he, see, he I didn't see that, any of that. I don't, I, don't okay. know, but... I don't know if it was the same episode, but he admitted like he didn't do any interviews with you. It was the other, right. it and was so, Jay, right? Exactly. Um, so John uh, Pounder, uh, I kind kind of was reserving his judgment because he. Well, that's he, good to know because uh, you know from what yeah. what I was told, it was like he just threw me under the bus and and gave a just a broad answer, and I was like, my gosh, man! I, apparently, I failed in my explanation of you know there there's sons of light and sons of darkness, right? It's still a new topic to so many people out there. They just are not aware of the whole science of Bible right. codes. So don't don't take offense to it. He's just um, no offense, but ignorant at this point. He just doesn't know yet. Yeah. But I think Jake was very interested. Um, yes. When I heard you doing the code talk with him, he was um, very intrigued by it all. So well, that's, that's good to don't hear. Don't be brother. John also oh, yeah. has expressed interest in it as well. John himself has expressed interest in it uh, as well. He, uh, I heard him talking about, uh, I guess there's a famous code in Genesis where every 50th letter in Genesis or 50 characters up to it, and then you see Torah, and then you see Torah going the other way. And I heard him talking about that, and he said he thought that was interesting. So I don't yeah. know how. I, I, uh, post, I posted in the chat in this in here. Uh, the suspected video, I, I think it's that. It's, uh, <laughs> as I haven't seen it, so you have to watch it if it's this video. Now, you you guys will en encounter the same things as code searchers. And let me just warn you now, um, in, in showing somebody something or in conversation, you'll, you'll encounter somebody will, that will try to convince you that you're involved in witchcraft and you're doing something wrong, right? And they'll, they'll cite all this other information that has nothing to do with us, whether it's the Rael cult or it's people predicting the rapture and all that kind of stuff, because they want to lump you in the same group as those guys, right? And, and my goal is for us to be, to be set apart um, from that, have higher standards in searching, you know, unbiased research, right? You cannot go into a, a, a research topic biased guys because your 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 results are going to be slanted right you have to step back or you'll be trying to put that round peg in the square hole and you're going what's going on why does this not fit right so if you step back and be unbiased and allow you who to show you um what needs to be reconciled then then just you know if you're not convinced at that point I usually ask for a couple of, of confirmations just to be sure. Right. You so know, to, to kind of support, um, well, not to support, but in Daniel 12, um, nine, like to somebody who might be saying that this is witchcraft or whatever, mm -hmm. um, when it says, and he said, go Daniel for the words are hidden and sealed till the time of the end. Yeah. So what, what we are doing is being involved in the unsealing. Exactly. And guys, I, I found, for, for the most part, I found a lot of my students' name in, the, in those chapters of Daniel, and I can show you, very small skip. It's almost exclusively Daniel where this is encoded, which proves the, the theory that these codes are connected to sealed books, right? There had to be a mechanism for us in a time of, you know, advanced knowledge and man is moving to and fro because of transportation right and all this advancements it leads you to to understand that there's going to be some sort of mechanism if a book is sealed in the early parts and it's unsealed in the other parts how is it done right is it just a switch that's flipped on and books are now unsealed no there's a there's a tool involved there's people involved that are appointed to do that it even says in daniel there 
those that understand, and they'll instruct many, right? He's got these things sealed from the enemy for a reason. Now, all the hubbub and, and the misinformation you see from other channels and other people doing stuff um, is, is what we have to combat it. And it goes against the credibility of it. And so that's what I mean by set apart is, is doing this in a, in a, almost in a Velikovsky way, I would, I would, if I could use that comparison, where you take the scriptures as if it is, this is testimony and historical record and then observation of science. You overlay that and, you know, you reconcile those two, right? I look at the scriptures as um, the word of Yahuwah, not as, as myth and legend. And uh, that's where he come into a lot of, you know, people disagreed with him and even threw his theories out because he was willing to consider that and put it in a box that says, you know, it's not really billions of years, but relatively small package of about 6,000 years, all of this happened. That's hard for some to swallow that because of uh, evolution theory and all that kind of stuff, which by the way, is still a theory cannot be proven. <clears throat> However, there's more and more evidence that shows that, you know, even Einstein was wrong. Electricity dominates the universe, not gravity. Um, and so that's where we are in these scriptures where for a thousand years or more, all these theologians and people that's written books and their interpretations of these scriptures. And it was never for them. It's for that end time generation that that will have the unsealing and they will understand they will they will get that message right the codes i believe it, it's my firm belief it is a mechanism a tool that you has in, enabled us to do this right um, that's funny you would say that brother jonathan i um i had a friend of mine tell me that doing codes was of the devil and this and that. And I told him, I said, well, then can you explain to me Jeremiah 32 or 33, verse two and three, where it says, thus, thus said Yahuwah who made it, Yahuwah who formed it and established it. Yahuwah is his name. Call unto me and I shall answer you and show you great and accessible matters which you have not known. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what the high priest did with an ephod once a year for the congregation. He called upon the name, guys, in the, in the Holy of Holies with an ephod on and Yahuwah answered him in this way that he designed. He designed it that way. Maybe it's because when the Most High speaks with an audible voice, melt, mountains will melt, guys, right? Amen. Amen. Islands will wash away. I mean, all those kind of things happen when he speaks. So he speaks with that still small voice with us today because we have the Holy Spirit, right? It, it brings us that. But in those days, even when he was on the mountain, the people heard shofars and thundering and lightning, and it was terrifying, right? So maybe he gave us this ephod as a device. I'm just throwing that out there, guys, because I can't figure it out. You know, I'm certain he didn't design it for the high priest to be blinging. It, it had a function. It literally had a function, right? <laughs> so, the same thing with, with the codes, you know, it's not about the computer. It is actually the scriptures and the computer is just the, the tool that helps us, you know, put it together. And it doesn't take us a hundred years to figure out that every 50th letter in the, in the Torah, uh, you'll find Torah spell, right? There were sages 2000 years ago that figured that out and they figured it out by counting letters. We don't have to do it. The computer does that for us, right? So Computers are calculator. <laughs> right. So um, incidentally, Joseph in Egypt, when he was the accountant for the grain and he was put in, in, that, uh, in that job as the governor, that word used for computer, modern day computer, is the same word used as what Joseph did in those days. He figured, he, he calculated, he gosh, I can't put it into words, but uh, anyway, those four letters are the same exact four letters for computer. Um, the, the curious girdle yeah. is, 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 has the root word for computer in it. 
And that's the ephod. <laughs> that's the ephod. Yeah. So all these, all these connections and, and things that point to, uh, you know, what, what we think or may have a theory in, it actually gets confirmed in that way. And even by other people, you know, they're all along the same track and research and study and see the same thing. Um, so you, you're going to come across that. Just uh, we want you guys to be prepared to answer uh, when, when people accuse you of, of this or that, um, because the, quite frankly, he's, uh, he's given us an opportunity to, you know, touch the throne room guys. I mean, I can't put it any other way. It's, it's not a parlor trick. It's not, you, you know, entertainment. And that's what I've been feeling like on YouTube. It's just entertaining for a lot of people. But when we come to a re revelation, wow, man, you know, his name means something. Uh, it's, it's not just telling us in some 400 different scriptures that, you know, his name, there's codes that actually confirm we need to pay attention to his name. You know, that's big revelation. Um, being able to reconcile a, a, you know, a teaching or, or a doctrine that doesn't seem to fit seems to me a loving father would enable his children you know, to have a cheat sheet or some way to figure out those liars uh, that the scripture says every man is, right? That's how we have 58,000 Christian denominations, guys, because of argument over scriptures back and forth between these theologians and leaders. You have said, it doesn't have to be that. My children who are called by my name, it's for you, right? So, uh, Isaiah 49, 6, to restore the preserved. He had intentions to have a system that he would be able to restore. Agree, but man. preserved. How do you do that? Well, you would have to encrypt it and hide it from the enemy. Yeah. Right. And, and what else do you get? And the enemy figures out, okay, so Isaiah 53 is about, yeah, suffering servant. Okay, you beat me at the cross. What do I do? Well, we're going to have to, one thing we're going to do is take that name out. We're going to do something with that name. The other thing is, let's do some uh, gymnastics with translations, right? We'll go from Aramaic to Latin to Greek to English or whatever. And all of those times, it erodes away of much of the meaning and, and explanation of what's going on. And so that by the time you get to English, it's lost a lot of its essential meaning in, in what it's really saying, right? And so I think it's dangerous just to be a King James only kind of guy, right? Uh, you, you'll find a lot of fallacies and, and dead ends and things that don't make sense. Um, if you're a good Berean and you're digging, you don't just take what they're telling you in Sunday school for face value. You go actually search it yourself. It's, it's, some things just don't reconcile, guys. Uh, and we're not supposed to be in confusion. Um, he enabled a way for us to, to find him, right? Right. That's what the whole thing was about, taking the one language and dividing it up into the 70. There was confounding that happened. Yeah. Yeah. What amazes me is that, uh, like, I have a sister-in-law and brother-in-law who are King James only Baptists, and... Um, it amazes me that people think that that was the beginning and then everything forward has been changed. But what about everything before that? It's so much ignorance in the church. It is. It's very it is. sad. Um, yeah, uh, my, pro, my grandmothers, you know, both my dad's mom, they were hardcore Pentecostal women that wore very long dresses, very long, no makeup, hair in a bun, very, very uh, religious and in a lot of ignorance. And it's, you know, my grandmother would never made it out of fifth grade guys, right? She could barely read. So whatever her preacher told her, she believed it and you couldn't tell her no different. Right. So, a lot of people are like that today. They, they, their pastors or, or their and scriptures even deals with them. Woe to you shepherds. You led my sheep astray, right? It's those people who believe what they're hearing and, and never question. They don't go and study it themselves. They believe it. They just, and that's faith. There's nothing wrong with that. 
But the thing is, the scripture says, I'm not going to hold the, the accountable for the, the ignorance of the congregation. Who's he holding it accountable to? The shepherd. Right? Here we are. A lot of people aren't aware that the Geneva Bible and the Wycliffe Bible were the actual Bibles that first came about before the scrolls. And then came Dewey Rings. Yeah, uh, you know, I've got a documentary called A Lamp in the Darkness, which is a, the documentary on how the scriptures came about. It's very interesting. Um, you, can, you can see in that documentary the spiritual battle that went back and forth to preserve and to get that scriptures to us at, at the end, right? And I think the enemy, as well as the messengers of Yahuwah working through man, um, you know, all the way down to Gutenberg and, and the role he played in printing, right? Which gave men the access, the, the masses access to printed Bibles. Um, Yahuwah used that uh, all the way down to Martin Luther, who was a, he was a, f a flaming anti-Semite, right? But Yahuwah had, that's all he had to use at the time. Just Protestant Reformation, right? So Did you say a lamp in the darkness? Yeah, it's called a lamp in the darkness. I have it's, a, it's on my channel somewhere as a playlist. Yeah, I got I posted it to Archangel Michael too. <laughs> I just watched that like three weeks ago. That's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long one to sit through, but it's really good history and it covers all of that, like all the way through Gutenberg and everything that you know the scriptures went through. Um, even even the 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 meddling of the Roman Catholic Church in the in the Council of Nicaea, you know, um, the you, the early fathers. You'll hear people like Ken Johnson talking about the early fathers, like uh, Ptolemy and uh, Marcion and all these guys. Right. So they actually did damage to the scriptures. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. That it did. <laughs> it did. All right. So I've ran it. Um, ran it enough. Um, I do have a couple of codes that I've been working on, but I'm interested to see what you guys have been working on. Does anybody want to share? Uh, if the students want to share, please share. I'll share after. I'll share what I shared actually last class. And I'll give you guys uh, just a heads up on what, what it is. I saw Glazerson post something the other day, and then I had people message me that wanted me to check it out, which was, uh, a really cool code he found of, about um, Nibiru in, in Genesis. Um, he didn't exactly tell everybody where in Genesis this was, but I think it's pretty significant that somebody should point that out <laughs> because Yeshua said, as it was the days of Noah, it will be uh, in the end. So I'll share that if no one else has anything. Anybody? I've got a couple. Come on, man. I'm still working yeah. on the mods. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, brother. Um, I've got a couple, if anybody, if nobody else does. We got time. Go ahead, go ahead and. Uh, we, if you guys us. can. Go ahead, brother. You guys can uh, <laughs> put up with my slow laptop. Hopefully, she runs uh, decent tonight. Let's see. Of course, it wants to act like a knucklehead. Okay, here we go. So, I, I mean, I really feel like coming with, I think we should give people a chance, like when we hear stuff like this, because I, I believe in my heart there's more revelation with the codes and, and uh, uh, enough, so, so there's enough material already here to really provide a powerful witness and it's been that way since it started um but i, I really think there's more coming and, and i think whoever is out there rebuking or or what have you um we'll, we'll see eventually people need a chance you know well for the most part getting any of the anything coming out of it and the last thing i think it was heisner um, it, it was really an uneducated attempt to debunk the codes. I mean, ridiculous uh, explanations and accusations. I mean, the, the guy actually accused 
three outstanding uh, believers in, you know, people that actually believed in, and pushed the codes as, as something we need to pay attention to. And that is Yaakov Ramsel, um, Chuck Missler, and uh, Grant Jeffries. And uh, that basically he said they, they forged the Yeshua codes. And you and I both know that's impossible. It's there. It's impossible. It is. It's impossible. So, Absolutely. That, that's just a ridiculous statement to make. Yeah. So he told me that it was, it was an uneducated um, statement that didn't know what they were talking about. And so uh, we are here guys to, to show differently. And I think with, with a new program, it looks like we can do this. Um, James feels confident that we can. We'll have our own customized code program. Um, is it going to pull up? It is a little slow, isn't it? Our own it, it is. programs to, uh, to search. Based on this and the others, we want to try to take some of the same functions like the automatic word finder or the dictionary and have that as, as another function for our um, program. So what are we looking at here? Um, okay. Um, the access term at the bottom with the LAMID, um, Lamed, Kuf, Samet, Wav, Tal, He, Shin, Mem, Shin, to cover the sun. That's what it says, to, to cover the sun. And um, the idea here is um, exploring the idea of this idea of the sun being obfuscated. I mean, we obviously know you know, they're chemtrailing, and um, I believe um, it's a multifaceted program. Um, I believe part of the reason is is to, to obscure what's going on in the heavens. Um, there's some other pretty interesting theories out there, like a sun simulator and other things like that. Um, there, there is some terms that were coming up on the table that aren't keyed in here that were... Uh, elusive to that idea but they weren't really coming in close to the axis but um what you see here is nibiru running right into the axis uh um right here in the blue um this green word right here is uh, a word for dragon um um tanim um tav nun yod mem um, you have wormwood right here in the pink intersecting at the same noon right here. Wormwood and wormwood. Um, over here you have um, Kukub uh, Elahai, which um, this came up in uh, Amos in the plain text. Um, it translates in the KJV as star god, but when you put it in the translator, it means divine star. Um, and these, uh, these characters in the red diamonds, oh, right here in the purple is the destroyer. Mem, Shin, uh, Chet, Yod, Ta, the destroyer, okay? And this is all abacus effect right here. Um, I really don't think this comes up in the plain text because it's not anything that I recognize in scripture. And it says... And this is laid right on top of where it says destroyer here at a skip. Um, and it says this. And Yahuwah has sent forth his hand. So, um, you know, with something like this, with the destroyer, wormwood, or what have you, I mean, this is, this is the hand of Yahuwah doing the work, you know, a harbinger, so to speak. Um, and that's, um, oh, right here in the, in the, like the, the plate paisley type blue is Yeshua and, uh, in the light blue is, uh, Mashiach and this row, same thing right here, this row of dark red diamonds right here, um, says this in this configuration, when you. It, it, like in the translator, if you configure the characters differently, you'll get different results. Most of the results express the same idea and maybe worded it differently. Um, 
But that bottom row of characters says this, uh, and Yahuwah said unto her, Behold, I have been put to death. Um, and you'll see, you'll see Yeshua and Mashiach bridging these two rows of characters going right through. Um, this next table is the same matrix. Um, I've been doing, I had, I've had to do this on several of my tables that you guys have seen because, um, it just gets too cluttered. Um, so here we have the same axis term in the same, very same matrix, uh, to cover the sun and, um, going, th oh yeah. And you can tell it's the same table because I use the cuckoo of the high as like a stamp. So you can tell it's the same matrix. Um, this pink term right here running through the axis is the word for airplane or jet. Um, the, uh, mem, t uh, tet. Wav Samic. Um, these purple words right here are the words for, uh, for barium, Bet, Resh, Yod, Wav, Mem. So, we, and we know if you listen to Richie from Boston or people that talk about chemtrails, you know, barium, aluminum, and strontium, which is very interesting because this word right here with the gray line is the word for aluminum. Het, Mem, Resh, Noon. So we have airplane barium barium running through the axis and we have the word for aluminum right here right next to the axis which is pretty interesting um, um uh also on this table i don't have it marked but up here is saturn venus um Shemayim runs right through here oh and another interesting thing too that i caught towards the end was um if you look right here at the top of the axis term, you'll see shin, mem, shin, where tamim runs into. That's the word for sun. And that's also right here in the axis. But right beneath that, you'll see right here where my, my mouse is, my pointer, mem, lamed, kaf, king, shin, lamed, mem, hey, king Solomon, shalomah. Um, he's right there running through the axis. I'm pretty sure that's in the plain text. It has to be because it also appears right over here. How King Solomon could relate to this, you guys would probably have a better understanding of that. But, um, I, and I'm still working. I'm still looking for, there's a lot of interesting terms that come up in the um, word identifier database. And it's really cool to see, like when I'm working on tables and I use the, the database, you see some of these words come up and you, and you just, I mean, I don't need any more proof that this is the real thing. And it just amazes me that some of the terms that come up are just so relevant to what you're looking for. You're, you're going to see it. And I, I think that's a pretty handy, you know, I don't, I don't like relying on it because I want to be more self-reliant, but I do use it and it is handy. <laughs> um, so, but that's, that's what I have, guys, so. That's very good. Outstanding, yeah, no brother. Well, praise Yahuwah for that. Uh, it's, uh, it's a topic I've always, you know, many of us, a uh, topic I've always been interested in. Um, I've always been a big fan of, uh, you know, uh, Nibiru research and, and chemtrails and stuff like that. So it's a pretty cool thing to dive into, so. When, when 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 you say cover the sun, it makes me think of when the day Yeshua was crucified and the sun was actually covered that day, and mm -hmm. that was a that was an impossibility because it wasn't the fifteenth of the month and the moon was nowhere near uh, the position for a solar or, or a lunar eclipse. And for that fact, what causes a three hour? eclipse right because the moon only yeah. causes a seven minute well when yahua says stop shining <laughs> i guess there's no and that's that's pretty interesting because a lot of people that are doing um planet x research now like wso he's real big um uh the idea behind the sun simulator is to simulate sunlight while there are eclipses going on now there have been recent reports in other countries of total darkness happening in the daytime 
And people think that it's either A, because of a glitch in whatever this array is, or, so, you know, it would, if, if there's a system here and there's, there's multiple bodies with it and it's going in front of the sun and they don't want people to see it, that'd be the perfect way to do it if they have the technology. <laughs> I think with uh, some of the, some of the uh, like AstroGrab, the simulators, um, there's something perturbing planets. Right, and so we're gonna see the effects of that. If there was something in our solar system, like some of those channels are suggesting, we would be seeing my mustaches itching. <laughs> we would be seeing, uh, I think, much more drastic effects. Now, don't get me wrong, the earthquakes, the volcanoes, all the stuff going on, the, the crevices that are opening up, all signs, um, but the simulations showing um, uh, 14 earth masses you know the mathematics and uh, behind that in that computation they put together all the planets were you know affected so we would see major major if they were in our solar system but i think it's all only outbound coming in um who is not muted Oh, it was me. I'm sorry. I wanted to say something. Okay. I'll turn it down a little bit. Um, so your your access term, Scott, uh, the Kasut part or Kasut, I looked it up. Getting a little feedback with Jonathan. Um, I looked it up because I wasn't sure about the spelling, and there it was. And I encourage you guys, those of you who are further along, to... Um, you know, if you see something that sticks out to you when somebody presents something and, and you want to just check it, um, it's, it's good practice to do. And um, if you get on a place like YouTube, people that do have some experience with the Hebrew, they will check your work. Um, and there's certainly those that speak Hebrew and um, are not necessarily <laughs> friends of, of Ephraim will definitely check your work. Um, but the word is there to cover and availing. And the interesting thing is um, it's the same letters as in the word Sukkot. And that's why I wanted to check it because I thought maybe that's not, maybe he's meaning Sukkot, but it's. Right, I thought that was really cool. But, except um, No, it was correct. It is uh, Kasut or Kasot. I didn't look at the vowel pronunciations, but um, the interesting thing is that Sukkot would just be the same word, except for the stomach and the cough would or be turned around. interchanged. Right. Um, and that means booths. But I remember talking to Eric Bissell one time. I was, I was actually driving him to a, a um, presentation he was making in Southern California. And I was asking him about Sukkot and the, the branches that were to be used on the booths. And he described them in the, in the Hebrew that it is very much about, um, it's not like you might see these pictures of the, of the Jewish booths where they invite everybody over and it's a beautifully decorated outside tent kind of um, place for, the, for them to have one meal in, but that these trees in the Hebrew have to do with this sense of putting a hedge around you. It is a covering that these things are covering you, that you're, you're kind of practicing being out, out and, and protected. You're hiding yourself um, from, from any sort of enemy or something or um, just where you're outside and you're a little bit more vulnerable than you might be in your home. You're, you're using these four different uh, trees, it says, to use and branches to, to build your sukkah, um, the, your booth, a sukkah is a singular of a sukkot, booths, and you're using them to conceal yourself or to build a hedge of protection, a, a visual protection um, covering yourself. So those two words, I think, are related. I think they're both kind of indic in indicated there with the booths and covering. There's a relationship there. And also with uh, kasut being to cover, we've got that um, cough somic, um, there was a time back, you guys might remember, uh, Rick and I had done a study on, um, on the word kaseh, which was uh, kaf samic aleph in um, Psalm 81.3. And some of the translations and even the Strong's Concordance says that this word is a full moon. Um, but we looked at other uh, dictionaries and lexicons and concordances and 
the word means concealed. So the idea of it being a full moon would mean it's concealed with light. And the other is it's concealed in, in darkness. And most of the dictionaries agree that it is, it is a full moon is a dark moon. It's concealed. It, you, it's not concealed in light because that's not concealed. So therefore, like on new moon day or at the evening, we know it's over when we see that first sliver. Um, the dark part is over and that first sliver indicates tomorrow is a work day. It's the first work day of the month. So that's what it, it, can see, it, it, um, it reveals to us, it, it signifies to us. But obviously that idea of the Kafsamic Aleph, it is also the throne. That word translates to throne and it translates to um, concealed. And then when you see the Kafsamic Wata, which is a plural of the Kafsamic, it means to cover or a veiling. And again, I think it is, I think it's very uh, indicated in the word Sukkot for booths, that there is a covering. There's a relationship between booths and covering. And anytime we see those words with, even in this code um, table, and that covering the sun, it can be talk, it can also be talking about um, issues with the calendar, with new moon, or with that, even with that covering the sun, that, that could have to do also, um, I think it just could have, it could have some relationship to do with the feast on the calendar as well, when we see that word show up. That's all I want to share. Thank you, sister. Good insight, Darla. Thank you. Yeah, really interesting. Yeah, good table, Scott. It was a good table. Uh, those words related. Uh, seeing Barry and uh, I thought it was staggering, really. Really, yeah. Uh, it, it, I, it was, yeah, this perfect word. And, and to have aluminum there as well. I mean, how do you have a word like barium, even if it's in an EOS skip, show up in the he ancient Hebrew text? And, and you know, that word, that was one of the words that came up in the, the identifier database. It was one of the first words that I saw. And I said, wait a second, that's, that's just, that's just so, that's not there by coincidence. So, so thank you. Praise you. Who's next? Is my I'll, I'll go next, Brother John. Um, I'm looking at Jeremiah chapter two, and you notice say anything in the table that's there? <laughs> um, yeah, you, there, I see the destroyer. The word. The the. The year 5728 is coded in two places in the plain text as a word. It's, it's in Isaiah 49:15, and it's also in uh, Jeremiah th chapter 2, verse 32. And verse 30, you have the destroyer right here in the plain text. Yeah. Interesting. Now, now uh, the access term actually here is... is rips or i tried to get it as rips but it comes out as sapphire you have aliyahu rips here or it's rips one way it's sapphire the other right or or cipher yeah Which um pretty interesting because he is the guy that came up with the code program cipher i mean it's in his name yeah <laughs> now Jer now, in the, within the context, Jeremiah in chapter two, he's he's rebuking Judah because she's also gone astray too. If you read uh, Jeremiah three eight, and I saw when for all the cause whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and give her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the har harlot also. That's this line right here. And if you look in this line, you'll have Eliyahu going one way, but Ariel going the other way. And you have Kohan, Ariel Kohan. Now that's pretty fascinating. And then you have the word Torah written over top of it. 
That's verse eight. Forwards and backwards together. And you see the struggle that um, these two yeah. men, the ideas that they have between the restoration and, and no restoration, it's just all Judah. But, but Judah has gone astray here. Um, so that's interesting, this code, um, the word prophets up here is a different way of spelling it. Um, this is the prophet, the, are uh, their prophets. He's, he's rebuking, uh, them for their prophets, the ones that are prophesying falsehood. And you would normally spell it without the calf in here. It would be new and bet. Wav, Aleph, Wav, closed mem. But if you insert the calf in between the, the Yod and the closed mem, you would have the, uh, the prophets of them, meaning prophets other than you, you, Yeshua's prophets. <laughs> so uh, here, let me read that line. Yeah. Actually, probably... I mean, he's, he goes in some pretty heavy rebukes there. How can thou say, I am not polluted? Have I got not gone after Balaam? See that way in the valley, know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift dromedary traversing her ways. That's a female camel, by the way. A wild ass used to their wilder, wilderness that snuffed up the wind in her pleasure in her occasion who can turn her away. And all the that seek her will not weary themselves in her month. They shall find her with withhold thy foot from being unshod and thy throat from thirst. But thou sayest there is no hope. No, for I have loved strangers and after them. I, so he's talking about Israel being playing the harlot here as the thief is ashamed when he is found. So is the house of Israel ashamed. They, their Kings, their princes, their priests and their prophets. That's the word right here, their prophets, and is sitting right next to it is the word destroyer. <laughs> um, so I, I, anyways, <clears throat> I don't want to go into, you can read Jeremiah chapter two for yourself, but there's some heavy rebuking going, but it's, it, with the, it's within the same, con the, the whole point of this is you have the, the, the appearance of the word the destroyer and the appearance of the word 5728 or the numerical value to that within the same context. Yeah. And so the, the, what's, what this is saying is that this, this is relevant to our time. Like when, when I see 5776 or 5726 and 5776 coded in Daniel 812, but then in Daniel 814, the 2300 days is also mentioned. I know that, those 2300 days weren't just from when it was fulfilled before, but also for our time as well. This is, this is for our time, the destroyer. <laughs> so anyways, very good. But that's, that's interesting how your work on something that you're doing and work that I was doing uh, in Jeremiah and Isaiah and the two are literally crossing over thresholds here. Your work and my work and in, in that in, in let's Jeremiah, try, let's your book. It one more time. Let, let me show you what uh, Glazerson posted just a couple of days ago. Um, uh, take it a little step further, right? So you guys may have seen this. And what's so sad is um, he's only got fourteen hundred views on this, and this is very profound, right? Uh, the other thing going against him is he's not very understandable. His, his, his broken English is very thick. Uh, Hebrew, you know, it's hard for people to understand him. But let's just go through what, what he did, and I want to talk about this. Um, so you may notice, obviously, the past year or two, Glazers has been talking about Nibiru. Wasn't doing that before, right? But you may know that. Uh, the Talmud and some of the sages there, they, they believe that the coming of the Messiah to them, the first coming to us, his second arrival, will be um, preceded. And just like we see it in our, in our interpretations of, of prophecies, there is a series of events 
star is seen. There's cataclysms, there's war, uh, a series of other things, you know, same kind of things that we're, we're looking for as well. What's interesting is <laughs> this is another triangulation of what, what we're, we're looking at, what I've looked at, what Chris is looking at, and Glazerson's, you know, angle on it as well. Let's see what he found. So he finds a connection between Nibiru and the third temple. Now, that's pretty interesting, right? Because we know the third temple plays a role in, in the end time eschatology, right? So he's saying it looks like there's a connection. A very, very interesting, significant table. As you see also, to understand what is behind, because very, very likely there is something behind. So this is what you see in this table. The first thing is very significant because it comes from one book. You can see it. It's all in Genesis. Genesis right? It's all in Genesis. Three chapters. You can see it. Both fifths and six. It's three chapters. So many words. Three chapters. All of them connected. This is Fourth. Fifth and sixth, Four, Genesis. Verses I found afterwards. Also found and very, very significant. So the first thing, let us. All right, so let's look at what he's got. He's got Shekinah. Shekinah is his access term. It comes at a skip of 71, which is ex extremely low. So this literally falls in three books of Genesis. Uh, um, you may know where this is going, right? So what do we got in there? We got Nibiru, the long spelling of it, running right, right through where Shekinah is. He's also got the current year, Tav Shenayim Chet, but also 5776 in a plane right there. Just under that is a snip, he will comfort us, or he has will comfort us, but it's actually he will comfort us. Um, who? The Mashiach is right there. The Mashiach is running right there. What's really astounding is, is the number of, of um, ELS terms that are the exact same skip, which like the Mashiach and uh, the faith, which is Emunah, right? Also, um, in Moriah, the, the Mount Moriah, is the same skip. It's the same skip as, as the Messiah. And the son of David, which is sitting right on Emunah, uh, like a stair, right? You see the Ben David in the black. So all these things are really clustered, really tight. He's got Elijah running across the top and Teshuvah, a penance uh, that's, that's under that. 77 is in the plain text, as you see right above that. Um, so we're just kind of skipping through what he's found um, in the table. And now I want to show you what I, what I found, because what he didn't say in his video, actually. All right, so here's the very same one, okay? It's at a skip of 71. Uh, he says in the video, in, 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 you know, sacred numbers of you, uh, 71 is very important. I, I tend to agree. But uh, let's just take a look at what, what he didn't have in there. That word right there in the plain text, guys, what is that? Destroyer. There's a destroyer in there. Now, see how, the, how this collaborative uh triangulation as i call it works this is something that the rabbis brought from the table but in my observation i was able to find the destroyers right there right? your your, ta your table isn't up i don't I, i'm not seeing your table oh wow okay thank you for telling me that you're welcome brother. Oh, you got scratching your heads okay this is the very same table thank you um, i was lost <laughs> this is the same table. Shekinah. It, uh, we got Nibiru running right through there, right? This is uh, in Moriah. Um, this is Mikdash. This is the temple. Mikdash is temple. Um, the Messiah uh, in Moriah, Ben David, and Imunah, all, every one of them, the same exact skill. All of those. That's why they're. they're they're angled the same way. They're the same number and the same de divisive number, right? With last year in the plain text, Tav Shenayin Vav, 
right? And he will comfort us. Who? The Messiah. Who's he, who's he comforting? Benai Elohim, the children of Elohim. All right. Look at this. Call, Emim, Kanach, the days of Noah. Right there. Oh, look at that. Teshuva. Teshuva is there. Wow. And the destroyer wow. in an ELS. But not only that, it's also in the plain text right there. Right up under a significant verse. And then we got Kakov, a star. Wow. And we've got Nephilim. Oh, wow. So you know where we are. Look, look where we are in Genesis. We're right around five and six right there, guys. What happens there? Anybody know? Bueller? Bueller? Yeah, that's where, the, that's where the Nephilim are. The beginning of the Nephilim, ain't it? It's when you would destroy the yeah. earth. Yeah. The destroyer. Destroys it with water this, that time, right? <laughs> All right, so let's just look <clears throat> at verse 12. And Yahuwah looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh. It was corrupt upon the earth. And Yahuwah said to Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, and the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth, right? That's the destroyer right there. Actually, an extra mem moment completes uh, the passage there. I will destroy them. But taking that men off, you've got the destroyer, right? Amen. It is the arm. It is the hand of the mighty one that's doing this, guys. Right? So Amen. we're in the story where he's found Nibiru of all places. What's Nibiru doing there? Could it possibly be this dark star that has something to do with the deluge? that caused the earth to, to rip apart, to pull on itself, right? Because there, no, there was no rain, and th that came from the center of the earth. You do understand that, right? This, this deluge, as, as the scriptures say, right? Flooded the earth and destroyed uh, the, the evil on it. Um, Nephilim. We got Nephilim right there. These are the hybrids. These are the, the, the fallen, the, the, the sons and daughters of the fallen one, right? If I remember correctly, didn't he open the earth for water to gush up out? Yeah, it's the deluge. Okay. And so okay. what, how did that happen? Was it a planet that came to, or did you, you know, kind of take off his gloves and grab the earth and go, you know what? He stretched it probably, yeah. right? What'd you think? It, was a, it was physics. It was his creation. He commanded his creation and it right. responded. You know, th this other system came through, and w the results happened. Amen. Listen, the th in the Thunderbolts uh, channel has got a really good uh, documentary called Ancient Sky, an alien sky, which talks about the planets being lined up sort of like pearls. And, and we could see uh, our star at that time, this is a theory, was Saturn, not the sun that we have now. That was on the periphery, right? So we were in this little galaxy of our, our solar system of our own dominated by Saturn and looking straight up you could see all these planets and they made a design right and this design has been on all kinds of different ancient hieroglyphs and etchings and, and art right but it cannot be accounted for today so the theory is that the planets actually were positioned differently in an ancient time right I'm, I'm really rushing through that but it's a it's a very good documentary right the destroyer. You may have heard the, the Earth Watch talking about the destroyer is Jupiter, right? Well, in the in the electric universe theory and in, in so, some of these uh, research proposals that I've, I've looked at, that's what it is. Jupiter is is the uh, Jupiter and Venus actually. Venus used to be a comet that was ejected from the core of Jupiter, right? There's some way out there, Velikovsky stuff, guys, I'm telling you. But I kind of think that this is, is, is correct. It was a chaotic solar system. It was, very, it was full of chaos um, in, in the infancy and when Yuho created it, is what I'm saying. Um, and so things happened to our Earth in an instant. You know, the Grand Canyon didn't take millions of years to be created. It was done in an instant with a plasma discharge, thunderings and lightnings of galactic proportions i mean immense power um the lightning bolt from planet to planet can carve the Marianas trench guys in a matter of moments 
not millions of years, moments, right? Uh, this is the alien sky and the, uh, the, the chaos of that, right? So Nibiru, an object of his creation, whatever you call it, Planet X, Nibiru, Wormwood, the ancients called it whatever. It's the same thing. Um, here it is. We were seeing a triangulated evidence, in, in other words, uh, if I can use that, like if we're using a grid map to triangulate a position of, of coordinates of something, that's why I'm using that term. Um, it fits. It fits in the story. It, it's the very same place where you was destroying the Earth the first time. Here is the appearance of the destroyer, Nibiru, and it, it all fits. Is that an accident? I don't think that's an accident, guys. No, that's a godsend. That, that is a divine hand. And that is because it's a story inside of a story. And sometimes with more in, involved in that, it, you know, it's very complex. So Amy. to pass it off to, to say, oh, you can find this in, in uh, Chinese phone book or you can find this in Moby Dick is preposterous. It's just not, it's not even, I don't know, guys, but there you are. This is work from the rabbis. All I did was plug in a couple of more terms and just actually look at the, the, the text that's where it is. And it screams to me, um, we're on the same, we're on the right track. There is something out there. There is something coming. There is something that is going to do things to our planet. It already is. There's some 40 volcanoes around the world simultaneously going off. That is not natural. And I don't care what the USGS says. There is no record of that being that consistent in that many volcanoes in history. Uh, their explanation is, well, technology wasn't there and people couldn't report it. I'm sorry. They wrote on tablets. They wrote on walls of painting, you know, cave paintings and stuff. They did record these things. Uh, that is the whole point behind Wielokowski's theory of observing these, these ancient history recordings of, of things. And it's consistent. There's been an acceleration of earthquakes and volcanic activity and the appearance of comets and interstellar objects coming through our solar system. It's an increase that's telling us something. And the fact that our government can't attribute for $8 trillion and they dig in tunnels all across and under the United States and stockpiling stuff, it's not for a sleepover. Can I give you another witness on that? Please, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'd done this actually closer to the end, end of 2017. This is Genesis 7, 11 in the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month in the 17th day of the month, the seventh day where all the founds of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened and you have wormwood coated right along there, right there, wormwood. You have stones of running across, you have in the, in the Shemaim, uh, the hail to the earth, very small code, 20, uh, skip at 23. 23. Uh, where is that? Oh, that's in Genesis. Genesis chapter 7. Wow. Oh, that is a Torah code. Wow. That is technically a Torah code. So uh -huh. to take note of for those rabbis that may be watching this, because I'm, I'm, I'm possibly going to put this on YouTube if it's okay with you guys. Yeah. Um, I haven't put anything on codes in a while and, and the code um, subscribers are having a fit about it. I'm getting a lot of messages. Are you recording by the way? I am. Is, is that okay guys? Am I, am I clear to put that on Facebook? I mean, uh, YouTube? Yes, please do. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, as you may have seen, the website is down. Um, Darla is working to try to get stuff converted over to GoDaddy. And um, we're going to try some different things. I'm also going to be doing uh, a, a project with Jason, um, who's here, by the way. He's chilling in my living room. You may have seen Jason. <laughs> um, we're going to be working with um, <clears throat> the county and with some resident farmers down in the lower area down there uh, to put up some 
cameras and observe. And uh, yesterday was a fire breakout down there, and it was quite a hectic and frightening thing for for one of our friends, Miss Jenny. Um, luckily, it was it was just a minor breakout and didn't turn into you know something drastic. Relative to the other side, it's it's safer because there's more green on the side that we're we're on. Um, the other side is, is completely brown and dead and wildfires spread like that. <clears throat> so we're going to put some cameras up and some key points and try to get 24 hour live feeds. So anybody around the world can, can see that. But for the most part, those residents can monitor when those surges happen, when those out, because when those surges happen, you can have a lava breakout anywhere down that, you know, 13 miles to the sea, right? It's a, it's a channel. And in several places, it'll it'll cap over and run down, and sometimes making contact with on the, on one side very dry brush and trees, which ignites fires, and in the other side uh, there are still people living uh, in Nanavali and and and, and uh, Wawa and some of those areas that are, that can be impacted with a a breakout. So we're we're taking the initiative to try to get that set up for them and. Uh, yeah, it's, I've been working a lot on that. I've actually taken dignitaries, state representatives, um, people from the mayor and from the governor's office that are interested in getting a public viewing area. Jason and I have been the lobbyists, the, the, the boots on the ground trying to get that happening. Um, so that's where a lot of my time has been going as well. Um, anyway, um, I'm probably going to be doing a video because I'm not a technical person, incidentally. And I know, Chris, you are with cameras and things like that. Maybe I can get some advice from you. But, um, yeah, uh, we'd like to do something, you know, in the next couple of weeks and get established. Um, some kind of feed down there. We're, we're working with a, a satellite company that's already got a dish in the area we want to hook up to. So that's all good to go. But you know, Wi-Fi from cameras to a modem and all that kind of stuff. I'm completely ignorant. So I got to, I got to do a video and reach out to some of my subscribers that are more technical and maybe they can help me out. Does anybody got anything you want to share? Hey brother. Yeah. I actually have another, another table. If you guys want to see a, well, one more table I had, I, I'm working on it. I forgot about, um, sure. Um, just for the sake of maybe uh, getting it out of the way and having uh, time to do something else for next week or, but uh, it's a totally different subject. Um, we've been over this topic before and I, I'm not drawing any conclusions or saying anything. I just think it's interesting. Uh, you guys can see the screen, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The access term starts at the bottom with the Aleph, uh, Aish, uh, Aleph, Yod, Shin, uh, He, Chet, um, Tet, Aleph, Chet, uh, Ta, uh, Bet, Aleph, and that translates as the man of sin has come. The man of sin has come. And you'll see I don't know if this is the full correct spelling, but um, uh, wav, bet, mem, hey, Obama, right? Yes, no? Can you type this in right now? Is, is, that a, is that a table you can type in right now? Yeah, I've got my, my keys up, yeah. All right, so put in, put in um, Aleph, Vav, bet. We're going to spell it a different way. Um, okay. Uh, Aleph, Wav, Bet, yeah. Bet, Mim, Mim hey. hey, Hey, yeah. Nah, no, nope. Doesn't come up with the olive. 
Does it come up with the olive? But what you'll see here, though, you'll see you'll see Nimrod, uh, Noon, Mem, Resh, Dalit, uh, running through and running through again here, and you'll see it down here in the blue. But I thought what was really cool is you'll see uh, Pharaoh, Hey Resh, I and Hey Pharaoh here, and you'll see Pharaoh again intersecting at the the pay and the I in, in Pharaoh down here. So you have Pharaoh, 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 all coming together. So we know that this man has the spirit of Pharaoh. Now, I, I wasn't sure about the spelling. It did come up as Obama. I, I thought it was weird how his, how his name begins with an olive. Yeah, you can spell it that way. And that's, that is quite interesting because what's happened here is it's lost the olive in this, in this occurrence. Many tables that we would work on in something like this topic, Obama comes up consistently all over it. But the yes. fact is, missing an olive in this, in this, uh, I would expect it to be there at least three times. And it's not. In fact, it's there without an olive in Obama. Yeah. Because right the, the, the Hebrew way to, to pronounce it is Obama. Obama. Huh. It's not, yeah. So. Uh, just and you know i'm not making any presumptions um you know i have my suspicions about this man always have from the beginning no question no question yeah. he has that listen there's very clear we are either sons of light or sons of darkness okay so any and for that fact the, the powers to be are kings and queens they are ruled by the principalities of the air right so no matter who's in, in, in the office, whether it be Ronald Reagan, whether it be, you know, Obama, or whether it be Adolf Hitler or Stalin or Chairman Mao, guess what? They all have that Nimrod spirit. The spirit of Nimrod, yes. And that's why it comes up as a positive hit. You could also probably find Hitler there. You could also probably find Stalin there. I'd be, I'd be willing to bet it. Um, yes. And the reason for that is they're all the same spirit, right? They're all the same spirit. This just the physical body changes. I have to do some more exploring. Is in the in control and in, in, in power. This cosmic chess match is is some like to call it. Um, I think that is a, that is the now. It can be that he comes. In some way, if he if he gets involved with the UN, I would think that would be a strong indicator that uh, we're you know that he's he's still the lead runner. But I'm not like I said earlier in this in this class. I don't put myself in a box and you know have dogma about it and and keep myself open as a researcher to you know the possibility. No matter how much people like Donald Trump. He is not the savior of this country, guys. And the fact that people right. are hating him and even worship him. I mean, literally, there is there's a story going around Facebook of these Indian people in India with his picture, and they are worshiping him like he's some freaking deity. What? Right? I'm not kidding. Right. So, right, he, he, we already have established he is the, C, the, the Cyrus figure of this time. And Cyrus wasn't particularly a good guy, folks. If you go and look at Cyrus, he was a conquering king. He he killed people. He was he was a conqueror. I mean, he was chosen by Yahuwah to do a thing, and that's why he was called Mashiach. But that didn't mean make him a righteous person, right? Or or a safe person to be around. Neither was Nebuchadnezzar, but Nebuchadnezzar was a Mashiach. <laughs> right? Trump is a Mashiach, and that's that's clear. But is he Yahuwah's You know, the guy said, have you ever repented from your sins? And he said on two different occasions, I don't, I'm a good person. I've never had to repent. I think if, you, if you're just a good person, that's good enough. I, and he, I quote, I, go, I have gone and I've taken the little wafer and I've drinking the little wine and I did my thing. And, and what is that, guys? That's Roman Catholic, Right. So that is his Christian experience. If that's good enough for people to say, hey, he's the, whoo, I'm behind him, man, you know. Yeah, he saw no need for repentance. He said, I, there is no need for repentance. 
That's a red flag for me. I've done my research on both Obama and Trump, and Obama definitely has the Antichrist spirit. Now, whether he's going to be, you know, something big or not, I don't know. But like I tell everybody, and even on Facebook, you know, look at Trump. Look at his apartment. Look at everything he's about. If you set in front of that man God and money, you can bet on your life that he is picking money and not God. Yeah. Listen, now, you know, the, Jared Kushner's family pursued a particular address with a, with a hard passion, guys. They, they had to have 666, whatever Manhattan Main Street. Street. Yeah, they had to have that building. You know, is that a synchronicity? Is that just a coincidence? What, what's going on? You know, some people say, well, it's nothing. Oh, yeah, you can only do that so much. After they start stacking up, and, and there's just one after the other, with those red flags, you got to say, okay, we live in a spiritual world where these these principalities are, are in control of what's going on uh, to a certain point. You've always given them this dominion, right? And mm -hmm. we know how it plays out as per the scriptures say, the, the prophetic narrative. It's the... Um the 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 roman emperor has has the title of pharaoh he because yeah, they, after they at, took and conquered egypt you're right 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 so it's the roman emperor i bet you any money you would be able to find edom in rome e edom is synonymous with the word rome so you, if you just put in edom yeah. you you'd probably come up with roman a few places there yeah. uh, probably, that? you'd find the pope there and i would venture to say if you put Vatican in there, the, the short spelling, don't use the two vowels, the one vowel, and put Vatican, you might find that as well in there. Um, just a thought. <clears throat> uh, sorry, aren't they called Roman Catholics? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is Rome. It is Rome. It's Roman. In the, uh, the blood moon, and just guess where was the major part of the area that saw it the most was? North Africa and the Mediterranean. Um, so it was Rome. That was for Rome. Um, for the rest of us and mainland, you know, if you saw anything, it was just a little sliver. There was an earthquake in Italy in fall 2016, I think it was. And uh, Glazerson did a video on that. And he didn't call it Rome, Italy. He called it Edom, yeah. Italy. Right yeah. in his title, Edom, Italy. Interesting. Yeah. So, hmm. When you're looking for the Antichrist, you also got to take into consideration the Pope and his position in, in that. I used to think it was more about the, the political aspect of that, and, and it had me pointed at Trump exclusively. But as, as, as I discovered, um, all of these people, all of these leaders, they carry the same traits, they carry the same spirit. If we got, listen, if we got Hillary Clinton in there, guess what kind of spirit? 99.9, .9, I mean, or a hundred percent certain spirit. Guess what? Jezebel. Undoubtedly, it's a Jezebel dominating spirit there. And that, that was what we were up against. It was either Cyrus or Jezebel. Um, so the lesser of the two evils. Let's just say, all right. Well, we're not done with her yet. It, it, there's, there's a high chance they're going to try to kill this guy, right? Yeah. I, I, I hate to to see that happen because because his life is mirroring so much like JFK, and the tables are almost identical in in the in the interaction of words and phrases and things. Um, it's crazy. So. <laughs> the, 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 you know, JFK was not allowed to go in his next term, guys. They snuffed him and every, everyone around him, his brother, his son, you know, eventually his son. And there are some people that believe that JFK Jr. was murdered because he was going to go into publications. He, his, his, um, his, he was booming at the time. He was about to take off, right? And people feared that he was going to tell the truth because they, they know who did it. Everybody in the, in the circles behind knew LBJ was the one who did it. It ordered it, allowed it to happen. 
right? They may not knew that James Files was the actual one that pulled the trigger, but they enabled it. The CIA watched, the Russians watched, the mob did their thing, and that's who it was. It was the mob, right? The codes are, it's, it's all there. You can find all of those terms and names. And words not known before were there for thousands of years. And after the fact, after testimony, we can find it there. That tells me, you know, we own something here. And Edom does come up in that table. Edom comes up four times in that table. See? <laughs> Brother Chris, so thank you. For the can, can you show us? I would have thought Obama would have come up that many times. I I think it does. I just kept the one that was by the um, access. I think it did come up a couple times. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. that. But uh, it's coming. There we go. Yeah, if that's Aleph, Dalit, Wav, Mem. Yeah. Um, it also comes up there at a long skip. And. Also comes up there, so they relatively close to the axis, um, kind of spread out. But uh, the, the, yeah, the, that's you had one down along the scripture, down closer to the bottom. Okay, I'll, I'll pull it up, brother. Yeah, right there. That one there. You see how Pharaoh? Yeah. Peresh, Ayan, Hey, and the word Edom intersect. You could you yeah. could actually make a table of that. Oh wow! Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, even at Thank even you. at even at a skip like that, you don't think there's any abacus going on right here, or between between where it says Pharaoh and Edom? No. Um, like in this. Are you yeah. talking about in this little area right here? No, I'm. I'm. Well, you got. You have Edom running backwards on the plain text. Right. Right. Okay, but the, also the hay for Pharaoh. Okay. Yes. Is also connecting on the same line. So there's yes. some, there's there's obviously a, an association between Pharaoh and yeah. Edom. And Edom. Yes. This yes. Is what it's... Exactly what you were just telling me. Thank you, brother. Cool. Thank you. And, and thank you for the suggestions. I'll, I mean, I'll have to uh, plug in some more terms and, and see what, what else is on here. This is something I just started the other day. So. Hey, Scott. Also, I looked at um, Pharaoh is uh, 6547. And it's uh, in, in English, we say Pharaoh, but in Hebrew, it's Paro. And para, the word before it, means in the sense of beginning, leadership. Um, so, and you had Nimrod there several times, so I thought that might be significant, a significant meaning of those letters showing up there. Um, also, when I look at that kind of word, I want to look at what is the pay resh about. So I looked at pay resh and I found something very interesting. I think you guys might like it too, find it interesting. For, for pay resh, it says par as breaking forth in wild strength so it's sort of like a, a beginning again it's something breaking out or perhaps it's dividing the hoof par the masculine noun means bullock par means young bull which is the significance in its first scriptural appearance in Bereshit or genesis 32 15 which tells us that among the gifts Jacob sent to placate esau were 10 bulls. bulls yes 10 bulls like we've got to remember the uh the 10 northern tribes is what i was thinking when i read that the 10 bulls and then it says in psalm twenty two twelve, the word is used to describe fierce strong enemies many bulls have compassed me strong bulls of bashan have beset me around when elohim threatens the nations with judgment in isaiah 34 7 he describes their princes and warriors as young bulls which he will slaughter. Um, para, again, here we go back to the Peresh. Um, I don't know if it's saying Peresh hay or Peresh ein hay because it's in English. Para, the feminine form of par, okay, it's Peresh hay there without the ayin. 
Um, the feminine form of par is used disdainfully of women in Amos 4.1. Hear this word, you kind of Bashan. Um, so the, I just thought that was interesting about the 10 bulls that he gave to his brother as sort of a peace offering. That is really interesting. And there, I, I think there's uh, the association with bulls and sons or people is cool because there's a similar prophecy in the book of Enoch regarding Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The the molten calf was a was a was a bull with a sun over its head, to what they had tried to replace, as well. Anybody else want to share? Oh, I also wanted to suggest for you guys to look at the word Mashiach, which is the anointed one, and Mashkit, which is the destroyer destruction. It's got all the same letters except for Mashkit has a ta on the end and the yod and the chet are um, switched. switched. Yeah, same letters. So those permutations, that's, I, I pointed that out, I think, last week uh, or the week before, that the same letters, you know, it's, it's telling us something, that this destroyer is connected to Mashiach. Um, we know, guys, when he comes, he's coming as a lion, right? with a sword he's coming to destroy and to judge the wicked and, and people don't want to hear that they want to hear good stuff tickle their ears and patty cake and all that kind of stuff but it's for the wicked it's going to be bad it's the earth will be destroyed by fire that's can what I, happens this time is fire can i ask what's the proper spelling of destroyer is like in Hebrew, what what it would be? Yes. Yeah, that's mem sheen chet yod ta mashkit. Mashkit. Oh, mashkit. All right. Thank you. You're getting close when you say mosquito. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's yeah, that's a good way to remember it. I actually, I think there's a repellent called mosquito. <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> Thank that you. That might be by design. I would check in and see if that's a Jewish company. Seriously, interesting. Uh, because they call it mesquite. Uh, it's a it's a repellent. But anyway, um, who's next? Terrence, how you doing, brother? In your uh, your experience down under, is it winter there now? Yes. And um, yeah, look, um, my life's nice and smooth. Um, I'm just busy. I still do some contracting work. I used to be an accountant. Uh, we have a June year end. I still do a bit. So I'm just right in the thick of that at the moment. I thought I was going to take the test last week on lesson 34. Um, I've, got a, I've got a keys to Bible kind of question. When, um, after, you, after you find a, um, an axis term, and then you go looking for anomalies. In there, you can um, say that that word finder, for instance, you can set the skip in there and won't let you put above a thousand. It goes one to a thousand. Uh, I'm assuming that is not talking about the skip like the axis term is, but talking about the skip within that visible table after you've got the yeah your term the skip of your term will be found let's say uh it'll be relative to the to the skip of, of your access term too it, it, there are boundaries um but but i think there is a way to set that uh manually if and do you know can can you elaborate on on that function can you preset your your uh the width of the the skip of your els term you can in Torah saw. You can set you it. Mean the ones, do you do you mean Terrence the ones that you look for after you have yeah. an access term? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, um I know I don't play around with it a whole lot. I usually just keep it at a thousand. Um, yeah, I, I me too, but I was wondering it is talking about the skip within the page that the visible page that you've got up. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. right. Now you can change it. There, uh, there is at the bottom of the screen where you're searching. You can 
ask it to look within the retrieved matrix yes. or the visible matrix. Right. Yes. So I always just keep it on the visible matrix so that it's within that screen that I'm looking on. Yeah. You, um, you could toy around with doing the other one and uh, then it'll look within the whole scope of, you know, from one side to the other of things wow. you can't yeah. see. I haven't personally tried that, um, but hey, go for it. It's uncharted no, territory I, I, as far I, as I know. I see the point of looking anywhere other than what you can visibly see on the screen. Um, yeah, Jonathan. Trying, well, what's the point of the setting and skip? Um, and I just leave it on a one to a thousand. It's another rabbit trail. Well, well, you're not going to get something with a thousand skip on that screen. Right. That's right. It's, it's sort of like setting your matrix width um, or, or a row skip. I'm assuming um, that that function. Um, there are other things that you could do that Gladyson does, which is called uh, best meeting. There is some way to to look for the best meetings of words, and and it will and the computer will just look for those terms in the best meeting. It's sort of like finding two access terms at once. It'll show you in the two terms together. Yep. somewhere if it appears sometimes it doesn't appear right um but you often hear well, in, in you know, keys to bible if you if you search for a main term but you put alternate yeah terms in, after it's finished its search you can say you can click on something that says just show me those that have got both both terms yeah see i didn't know you could do that yes but, that that's how i find um some of my access terms that I want to work with because I want to make sure that it has that second word within it. That's called yeah. best so, meeting. And so that Glazer, you'll hear Glazerson say, it, this is the best meeting. And uh, somehow there's a way to do that with Taurus off. However, I, I don't do that. I, I manually looked for it, but um, apparently you discovered that you can do that with <laughs> keys. That's cool. Um, well, you were talking about getting someone working with someone on writing some um, some code. Yep, um, the code program for this class, and that would be my my uh, my brother James um, to help. He, he, I don't know why I didn't think of him before, but he's. No, uh, that's. A, I, I'm imagining <laughs> they're they're fairly involved algorithms to be able. Yeah, to he knows about all that stuff. Yeah. If he's into all that, that's great. But an idea that I'd had is um, I would, after, after searching for a, 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 an access term, it'd be very interesting to be able to just click on a button and see all the little characters on the screen change to English characters. Yeah, we can put that go look for phonetic. You could go look for phonetic things yourself yeah. in every direction, which way. I don't know if you were here, uh, Terrence, when, when, when he was actually here with the group. He is in hip chat. Uh, I don't know if he's been, because he's very busy, works with a government um, contractor. <laughs> uh, I was going to say but I don't want to say that. Watch him then. It's one of the big, it's one of the big group. No, he's, he's, he's in the private sector. But he's, he's also um, <laughs> Air Force military, but super That's genius. Right. And he's into computers, but he probably, <clears throat> you and him could speak a lot of jargon together because you're, you know, code guy too. Um, yeah. So, voice your when he when he's back when he comes to class and hangs out. Voice those those thoughts because we want to incorporate across the board from Torah, Saul, Keys to the Bible, and uh, the, some of the f functions in Code Finder, um, all in one in something for this group for this uh, custom made for this group. He's willing to do it. Um, yeah, just a matter of time for him, really. Um, mm. He's I'm sure. got a lot of things um, going on, but I believe he's capable of it. He, he, he seems to understand the concept when I've talked to him about it. He seemed yep. very confident. Yeah, man, we could, we could probably do this. So I don't think my past with him and, and he was there the whole time, but at a certain point it clicked for me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he's in my family and this guy could help us. Right. And he happened to be watching me on now you see TV. And he contacted me, and I didn't even know he was watching me. And uh, he's like, hey, man, you know, I'd really like to take your class, man. I, I'm really interested in taking your class. And he wanted to get involved in this. And so I'm glad he said that, and he did, because 
I think he's the guy that's going to be able to help us with, with writing the program. Also, yeah. input from all of you. If you guys have something you'd like to see in this, um, user-friendly function um, incorporated, you know, we'll, we'll try to get all those ideas in there. Um, you know, another handy thing about uh, uh, searching with an, with an alternate um, is if you if you have a uh, you know short a short word that's going to crop up you know hundreds or hundreds and hundreds of times you if 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 out after it you say well only show me those that have got the alternate as well yeah. you know you can narrow it down instead of having to look at each one you're right yeah, yeah good stuff yeah I know and I know in case of the Bible you can't narrow your search window to a, a box like you can on Torosoft. And that's what I like about Torosoft because if I'm looking for a word, it's only a three letter word and I'm looking at 5,000 letters and I don't, I'm not about to type in three letters and hit search because it's going to fill up every possibility. I'm only concerned about the proximity. So it's, it limits to me either I manually looking at the screen I'm looking and I do it in a spiral kind of, concept looking outward further and further and if i see any anomaly stacking of letters and things like that or i will scrunch down that search box you know like this let me just kind of show you demonstrate but jonathan just on the other side on the flip side the bonus of um keys to the bible is it won't highlight every word if you do search for it it'll only highlight the ones that you say to highlight that's good. Whereas Torosoft, you have to unclick all those yeah, different. Yeah, it's tedious, <laughs> time consuming. And so it yeah. led me to do things like this. Like if I wanted to search a small box uh, in here, I would, you know, literally take that and scrunch it down into a smaller box. Um, so we're looking at just a smaller area like that right there. You know, and I want to look at proximity very close to, you know, conjunctions of, of words and phrases together right so um even this for three letters may be a lot because uh, you may find yourself manually clicking stuff over here that don't matter because you're looking for any anomalies over here right but if you if you can't if you don't have the eye to visually see it the, the way to do it is is to scrunch it down like this and ask the computer search all possibilities and it'll find it and then you'd be like ah there it is. I didn't see that, right? Um, so that's a little little thing that I do um, when I'm using Torosol, and I don't want to spend the time unclicking all these letters. I'll, I'll I'll just do a proximity search wherever you know if, if it's a Mashiach, and I want to see if Yeshua is there, or uh, you know anything that's connected, and I want to see a connection. I'll, I'll search that area only. You know, because way over here in the left field is not necessarily relevant, guys. You, you know, you see people doing codes where they've got stuff scattered all over and they think they've got something awesome, but you really want to see things pulled together and show a divine interaction. Like, this is not accident. You know, this is not alphabet soup and, you know, an accident happened. We threw some letters down. No. It's, you know, there was a divine presence that actually put this here on purpose and you may be the first one to ever see it ever that's the profound thing guys i mean really you, you at your hands you have the potentially to, to see something you have wanted you to see nobody has ever seen right that's happened <laughs> it's crazy man um it's an amazing amazing father we have i it, this is I believe a gift that he's given us. Uh, Absolutely. This, Absolutely. How people can say it's divination, you know, I mean, how, who put them there? Right. You know, I, he did it to validate him and his, what yeah. he means. We don't need what, what this guy's over here saying and that guy and they're, they're conflicting and we're confused and what in the heck is going on, man? You who knew we would be in that state. And he said, no, <laughs> they'll find me. Why? Because I told them in Jeremiah 33, 3. Right? I'm sure you can use it for the wrong, try to use it for the wrong reasons. But right, and their consequences will happen. I, it's I, I, undeniable but that he has put them there. Amen.
That's why we spend quite a bit of time right at the beginning. The first eight to 10 weeks of the course is about everybody starting to learn some Hebrew and coming to Yahua and the codes from the right heart and understanding it's his book and his, the things he has sealed and he is unsealing and he is revealing to who he wants to reveal them to. And another point is that with the Hebrew letters in the codes programs, um, not everybody can read Hebrew, but those that are seeking him and are seeking his language and are desiring to learn it, just like he taught Abraham um, through the messengers, taught him the Hebrew after he had confounded the language. Um, for instance, I'm starting to learn the harp and I'm learning a 22 string harp with ideally the concept is that each string is a frequency that um, is involved with each of the 22 letters. And um, the, the brother I'm, I'm studying under, which is calmingharp.com. Incidentally, let me just interrupt you, Darla, I'm sorry, is another form of code, guys. There's others that have this theory that the scriptures can be played with these 22 letters. Go ahead, Darla. Right, and he is working with um, writing chords for that go with each of the words. Um, in, for instance, in Deuteronomy, 32. You can find it at calmingheart.com. And I picked up my harp. I bought it a couple of years ago and I hadn't done much with it. But now I'm sitting there and I'm practicing the song that he's written from Deuteronomy 32 that Yahuwah said the children of Israel are to learn that song. It's a song of Moses, incidentally. Yeah. So that to me sounds like it's a command. We're supposed to learn it. And, um, and I'm doing my best to learn. It takes me about 30 minutes just to practice through it. But if I practice a little bit every day, whether it's playing the harp or looking at some Hebrew words, once you start learning those Hebrew words, they sort of stick in your heart. You always know Netzer and Natsar. You know kind of what they're about, watching, keeping, guarding, observing. And also Shomer is, a, is another word that means that same concept of watching, keeping, guarding, observing his commandments, for instance. But we remember those things and we embrace them and we add things to it. Um, we had a conversation with Karen Bissell today. She called to just support Jonathan and, and in, his, in his YouTube ministry. And, um, you know, we just have a, we've had a lot of love poured out toward us. And um, we, we, my relationship with Eric Bissell goes back for several years and Karen, because by the way, I really want to be Karen's great friend because I think Eric does amazing work. And it's very important to me that, um, I, I have friends out of both of them. She's just wonderful, loving, and, um, they obviously have shared out of their hearts, the paleo Hebrew and every piece of the Hebrew and the paleo Hebrew, and even the Arabic is a Shemitic language and um, the, the Palestinian Aramaic, and um, it all helps us. It all helps us to figure all these things out. Um, embracing the fathers, the language he gave to us, he left with us, um, and, and comparing and contrasting the Greek with the Hebrew and the Aramaic, and all of that is helping us draw closer to the father and, and um, pull out that confounding that happened when the languages um, were, were scattered, dispersed, like a pizza. That's what I was going to say. Karen was talking about the pizza. Um, let me put this on. Um, anyway, uh, we have a, quite an advantage just learning the Hebrew day, by, day in, day out, and just adding on, adding on the next layer of bricks and not letting, um, not letting, the grass grow under our feet because we're still moving forward with the father and he's going to be able to use us. And, um, I just encourage you guys just to stay with your modules. And as you're, as you're continuing to work in the codes, just keep moving forward in your modules because there's so much richness that is provided there for you guys. And in, in a short while, I'll be starting to work, work on the advanced program, which will begin with uh, Matthew chapter 13 and move forward. Um, and that'll either be in the Aramaic or the Hebrew or both. So we'll see how it goes from there, but that'll be in, in our future shortcoming. It's taken me a while to come to grips with that. But um, yeah, I have recently found that the study of words opens up 
doors to to other uh, or greater greater learning and understanding it's quite quite intriguing really such an ancient language which is so advanced the gematria and the multifaceted meanings of words uh, I've read up stuff about the paleel and the those funny terms um so yes quite intriguing language amazing Um, all right guys i think i'm going to close it here if nobody else has anything to share um i thank you for coming to class today uh and for participating um so last call is there anything else anybody wants to add for our prayer all right we love you guys Abba Yahuwah, we just are so thankful for these students and what you're doing in, in our lives, Father. We just, we give glory to you, and we love you for that. Abba, I ask that you be with these students, that you would continue to grow them in their, in their way, that you reveal yourself every day to them, Father, and lead them in the way that you'd have them go. Bring them back to us safe in the next class. And we ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Shalom, everybody. Amen. Shalom, everyone. Ah, play the top. Hello. Hello.